Worldwide Podcast. You want to talk about it, let's talk. You want to speak about it, let's speak. We're going to spread this encouragement from the church to the street. The Lakeisha, Lakeisha, Lakeisha Mosley Show. The Lakeisha, Lakeisha, Lakeisha Mosley Show. The Lakeisha, Lakeisha, Lakeisha Mosley Show. And they talk about nothing but the unseen and unspoken issues while providing encouragement and love and understanding. She talks about issues that people in high places and influences are afraid to discuss publicly. Stay tuned. It's about to get real live, live, live. And you're tuned in to the Lakeisha News. Amen. Amen. Greetings, everyone. Happy Monday. It is Lakeisha Mosley. So thankful that you tuned in to my show. It's the Lakeisha Mosley Show, and I'm so thankful and excited about tonight. We're going to have a great time. Listen, it's so close to spring. I mean, you have to be excited about this season right now. I mean, it's so beautiful outside. And um, God is just so good. He just has so many things that's happening in all of our lives. And I'm just so so thankful, and I just want to give him the glory, honor, and praise. Listen, tonight's show is going to be so amazing. I'm so excited about my special guest. Before I introduce my special guest, we're going to go ahead and talk about the topic real briefly um, that we're going to discuss tonight, which is going to be anointed, and it's going to bless you. It's called Flowing Forward Evolved. Flowing Forward Evolved. Are you flowing in the season that God has you in right now? in your life? Are you flowing? Are you allowing him to move through you and show you things that you've never seen before? Is God able to take part with you in your journey? Listen, I want to know. I know I personally am allowing him in so many different areas of my life that he wasn't allowed in, which is kind of crazy, right? God not allowed in. We're going to talk about this tonight because I want you to really take a, a really good look at this topic because we all have something that God is not allowed in, in our lives, that is subconsciously not allowed. But we're going to allow him in every area of life. And I want to talk that over with my special guest. This amazing woman is an author. She's a speaker. She's a police captain. And she is the founder of Paul Lee Ministries. I am so honored to have her on my show, the Lakeisha Mosley Show. I have Pastor Alicia Pitt. Alicia, are you here with me this evening? I sure am. How are you doing, Lakeisha? Hey, man, I'm doing amazing today. Listen, isn't it beautiful out there outside? Oh, yes, it is. It was very beautiful today. Oh, my God. Listen, it just get, it puts you in a mindset of just what God, God is doing in our lives, things that we didn't have to do for ourselves, but he's doing it for us. I mean, yes. wow, I'm excited. <laughs> yes, so, a so new amazing. season. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. New season. Um, it's something to <laughs> embrace it, right? Embracing That's it. That's so right. You're doing that in your life. Oh, my God. Uh, <laughs> please, please tell us a little bit about yourself because um, you have so many things going on. And I mean, I just see God um, evolving in your life in a big way. Please let us know a little bit about you and everything that you're doing currently right now. Okay. Well, as you've listened to things that I've already done. I simply want to say that I'm a woman of many hats and I'm a servant first before I'm anything else. Um, I work for social services. I've been working for social services for eight years in the Medicaid unit um, department dealing with the Obamacare and New Jersey family care. So basically servicing my community in regards to dealing with health insurance. That is my full-time time job. And as you previously stated, I am the first Afro-American female police chaplain of the Millville Police Department and also lead chaplain for the Memorial High School and most recently staff chaplain of New Jersey Department of Corrections. And those last three that I named, they are volunteer positions, but I do it because I have a, a passion, a love to serve. Wow. I mean, I really see it in you. Um, I feel the excitement in you. You know, you're excited about <laughs> doing what you do, right? 
<laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, I, I tell people all the time that if it was about money, I would have stopped a long time ago. This is something that God has put in me. It is a passion of mine. And you, the Bible says in order to win souls, one must be wise. And so in order for you to win a soul, you have to love souls too in order to be able to win them. And so um, I'm coming from no other place but a place of love. And that's why I do what I do. Wow. I really feel that in your spirit, you know, um, I feel like you've reached a place in your life where you're enjoying what you do because you're aligned with what God has for your life. Yes. And, and you hit the nail on the head. I've been sharing with people and it's just as simply as what Daniel said in scripture. He said, when I turned my heart to understand Then the Lord heard me. And so once I really positioned myself and really got into his perfect will, not my permissive will, but his perfect divine will, then everything just began to fall in place. And as the scripture says, you know, the blessings just will will chase you down. It it, it will take over, it will take you over. And, And so I can honestly say that is the season that I'm in. I'm I'm living and walking in the manifestation of it right now. Wow, I can attest to that with you and I could totally agree. Mm-hmm. Um when you allow God in um in certain areas of your life that you haven't done before and he just literally takes mm-hmm. control. Isn't it like a flowing river? Yes. Yes. It's a it's a it's a continuous flow and it's consistent. And the key is when when people ask me, like, how are you doing all this stuff you're doing? My answer to them is simply obedience. God has given given me instructions, and as he gives me the instructions, without second-guessing or anything, I'm just following through with what he's given me. My gosh. So I got a question. So are you telling me <laughs> that <laughs> when you allow God in, you know, uh, just a little bit, you know what I mean? Just, it's just like, look, look, God, just look. Okay, you can take the lead on this and he just takes over it's like whoa god i didn't have i have no idea that you can do this in my life and you know and it's almost like it's without effort right because you don't have to work it out right (laughs) yes yes that um and it's funny that you're saying this because i recently been putting on my post i'm busy but i'm a different kind of busy and i said busy equals be easy Oh, wow. I really feel that, you know, um, I say that too a lot. I say, you know, I'm busy, <laughs> but it's not that uh, that effort busy, like that mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. drag busy, you know, like, oh, my goodness, I'm too busy to talk to you. I'm too busy to do this. But it's like, no, I'm busy doing God's work. You know what I yeah. mean? And not, you're confident about that, right? I know I am. Absolutely. You can be confident when you know you're doing what God has told you to do. And that's all about faith. Faith is nothing but confidence. I am confident then that what directions and instructions that he's given me, he's given it to me so I can do it in confidence knowing this is what God told me. And I don't worry about what the results is going to be. My first and foremost thought is to be obedient. My gosh. You know, isn't it, isn't it all it takes? It's like just to say yes. <laughs> just give me. A strong yes, and he's like, okay, cool, thank you. That's all I needed from you. That's all your part is, is to give me yes. a yes, let me in, right? Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, he, he, when he, was, he told Joshua, he said, if you be willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. And see, a lot of times we, we, we pick what we want to choose to be obedient in. And it's like what Jesus said to the Pharisees. He said, if you break one part of the law, you guilty of the whole thing. And so therefore we can't pick and choose. We let me put it this way. I know for me, and I say it like a broken record, God is not going to let me get out here any kind of way. It's going to be his way or no way at all. And like I said, when I really turned my heart to understand and really aligned myself up to what God wanted from me, because the truth of the matter is for the most part, most of us that are seasoned in God, we know what God is requiring of us. So the issue ain't that we don't know what he's requiring of us. The issue is, are we 
going to really do what he told us to do? Or are we going to be like Saul and we're going, we're going to save some stuff for ourselves? You know, we're going, we're going to be partly obedient and then and disobedient and, and then be disobedient in other areas. And we know what happened to Saul. He ended up getting dethroned because he was not fully obedient to what God had told him to do, which was to kill everything. Don't leave nothing alive. My gosh. I really totally feel that. So are you telling me? Mm-hmm. I'm transparent on this show. Uh, Pastor mm-hmm. I'm going to let you know. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm willing and um, uh, with uh, obedience to God because, you know, God mm-hmm. tells you, listen, tell your, tell your story. Listen, I didn't mm-hmm. listen. Very hard hit. I said, no, mm-hmm. it's my way or the highway, Lord. I, I don't, I know we're not doing that. And this is how I would tell God, I would run. I would mm-hmm. leave. I believe the whole thing. I would just say, uh, I'm not doing it. And so I'm going to do it my way, God, because I'm not, not doing it at all. He's like, wow, daughter. But I want to give you everything that you want in your life. And because you don't understand what I'm doing, because I'm going to give you every, the whole story, I want only give you a mm-hmm. little bit, you're going to run. And that's like, wow. <laughs> so, <laughs> so when and, I and fail right <laughs> mhm yeah and 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 we've all have been at some point running from god but I, when it comes to a level of maturity even paul he said it's hard to kick up against the pricks so <laughs> you you know it's almost like you boxing but you beat in the air because you 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 can't outbox god and so what i all what i've been telling people is if you give god what he wants god will give you what you want and see what it, what's going on on, um, and you can see it now where people are following other things instead of just being obedient to what God has given them. And prime example is I, I preached a message not too long ago um, entitled Hidden But Not Abandoned. And the message really touched me because a lot of times we'll be sitting back looking at other people, excel in different things or being on certain platforms, and we begin to question ourselves as to, Okay, why am I not on this platform? And the thing is, some God may not be calling you to that. And if he's not calling you to that, then you have to be okay with it that he's not calling you to that. And so I think that's where a lot of times we go wrong because what I realize is whatever God calls us to, it's not patterned after anyone else. It's unique in its own way. And if you're trying to be, and I always say this like a broken record, if you're trying to be another T.D. Jakes or Juanita Bynum, we don't, God don't need another Juanita Bynum. He got one. He needs you to be uniquely you, you know. And until you do that, you will not be effective in what he has called you to do because God wants to use your character and, and, and use your uniqueness uniqueness and winning others and touching others lives my god my god listen everyone if you're just now tuning into the Lakeisha Mosley show we are in for an amazing treat um definitely totally full of wisdom I'm so thankful for this woman of God she is the author she's a speaker she is a police captain she's also the founder of Pauline Ministries and she's a mentor um to so many who has been um getting so much wisdom from her. I have Pastor Alicia Pitt with us this evening on the Lakeisha Mosley Show. Wow. Pastor Pitt, let us know a little bit about um, just your openness as far as um, uh, open arms to anyone that has failed, anyone that uh, uh, pretty much has turned away, because I know what that feels like when they're turned away and they're, you know, um, in, in unforgiveness and, you know, uh, the sea of hate, the seed of, of, of jealousy, all of that. And we're going to talk about the book that you have um, as well, too. Mm-hmm. Tell us about that, a little bit of a little bit of nugget of how we can turn away from um, just that toxic patterns that Satan really is trying to keep us gripped into. Well, there's a prayer that I always tell people to pray when they are having a hard time letting go of things. And it's a simplistic prayer. And the prayer is, Lord, anoint me in my emotions. Because a lot of times, the reason why we can't let things go because we are stuck with how we are feeling. And because we are stuck with how we feel, we feel justified or a sense of entitlement to not let it go because 
because of how we feel. So the first thing is really if you're not in the place to really let it go, is saying the prayer that God anoint me in my emotions. And then the second thing is basically you have to simply make a choice. You have to choose to forgive because at the end of the day, Forgiveness is not based on feelings. It's a a choice that you're going to have to continuously make in order to forgive. And the truth of the matter is, and I say it all the time, people are not going to pick up that book unless they're really ready to let it go. My God, my God, everyone, this is totally amazing. I know you just received some healing right now from those words because um, sometimes you can be... um, boggled down um, in the uh, uh, the hurt that you've experienced. Mm-hmm. Listen, you were validated towards this hurt. Mm-hmm. Listen, it happened mm-hmm. to you, you know, but it's mm-hmm. not going to keep you um, in a place of wealth and prosperity if you keep latching on to it. It's almost like taking luggage that God wants to take over. It's like, you know, mm-hmm. when you're at the, at the uh, airport, you know, you're picking up your mm-hmm. luggage and you pick up like a couple of extra bags bags that, you know, you're like, whoa, you only burned one bag, but technically you brung like 10 (laughs) bags (laughs) because you never (laughs) let yourself down (laughs) and your back hurt and all those types of things, you know, I I, I feel that you're, you're, you're speaking that to us right now, um, Pastor. Oh oh my God. Um, Yeah. I mean, I hope I, I hope I don't have no religious folk on the line, but it's like the song with Erica Badu. She talks about the bag lady, right? You, you got too much baggage <laughs> going on. <laughs> so you, 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 so you, you know, and what did Jesus say? He said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So there's a lot of things that we're carrying that we should not be carrying in the first place. Oh, my gosh. You know, and, and sometimes you're like um, subconsciously carrying things that you thought you you put down, but you technically did Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. And I've gotten that um, actually most recently different. You know, I've been uh, doing a lot of podcast shows, and uh, the last one I did, the um, the host said, she said, I began to read your book, and I thought I had to let it go. She said, then I got upset because I had to put it down because I realized what I thought I let go, I hadn't let it go. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, my gosh. That is so real, Pastor. Uh, You know, you just brought up um, definitely a a huge topic because a lot of us, we think we let certain things go. But Mm -hmm. when we realize certain things aren't really opening up in our lives, like certain blessings, um, like say you're on a project or something like that, but you just can't get it right. It's like, God, how do I can't get this right, right? And he's like, well, Mm -hmm. technically, you can't really hear me right now and see you let that thing go that you know you're still holding on ten years ten years ago. <laughs> yes, yes, and that's and that's the thing is, um, especially those of us in the church world, we we make things so hard because he said that the scripture is so simple that a child can understand. If we would just basically follow the directions. You know, lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways, acknowledge him. And the promise is he's going to direct our path. And the thing is, we are, the problem is we are offering all of these services to God. And remember, David, he said, Lord, if you desired sacrifice, I wouldn't have gave that. See, we, we're offering all of these sacrifices, and that's not what God wants. He doesn't want the sacrifices. And so we're, so people, are, we're doing all of this service stuff and God says that's not what I want because you're doing all of this but your your heart needs to be fixed that that stony heart needs to come out and I need to put in a heart of flesh and so that's what I realized what's going on is people are, are offering services to God instead of really getting their spiritual life in alignment you know you don't and the thing is a lot of it is humbling ourselves and kicking pride aside, humbling ourselves and kicking pride aside. There's been times I knew I hadn't did anything to anyone, but I humbled myself and went to the person, look, obviously there's there's something going on, and if I said anything or done anything to offend you, I apologize. Now, if they accept it or not, that's that's not my problem. I've done what God said, which he said, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of me. 
meekness, and people think meekness is a weakness, but actually meekness is strength under control. So I humble myself enough to go to you, and and if whether you receive it or not, at that point I can shake the dust off my feet because I've done what Scripture has told me to do. My Lord, my Lord, everyone, if you just now tuning into the Lakeisha Mobley Show, have the amazing pastor Alicia Pitts here with us. Um, this amazing woman of God is the author, speaker. Um, she is also founder of Pauline Ministries, and she does she has so many hats. Um, that are truly ordained by God, and God is truly flowing in her life. This episode is called Flowing Forward, and she is just the woman that is doing that and showing us just how to continue to do that in every season in our lives. Wow. Pastor, you got to let us know about um, the book that you have called Let It Go For Your Sake. Forgive. Wow. Well, it's ba- and that's basically it. And it's actually a workbook. It is it's going to cause you to work on you. Mm. I can give you direction. I can give you instruction all day long. But the, the bulk of the work is going to be on the person that needs to let it go. And, again, you have to have a desire to let it go. you got to start with that desire. So, Again, I, I can't reiterate it enough. If you don't have the desire, but you know you, you have an issue, you acknowledge that you have a problem, then the first step is God anoint me and my emotions. Because at because forgiveness, it is a lifestyle. This is not a, um, a one-and-done deal. And the prime example I can give you according to Scripture was Peter when he, when he asked Jesus, you know, how many times should I forgive my brother? And he said seven times like it was some grand thing because in, in Jewish law, they gave them three times. So Peter ups the ante a little bit and says, okay, hey, how about seven times? And so Jesus turns around and responds and he says, 70 times seven. And so in other words, Jesus' response was, as many times as it takes, you keep on forgiving. So this is not a one and done thing like I'm going to forgive you once and then that's it. No, this is a lifestyle. and. And you have to con- you have to continuously make the choice to forgive. And so, as I'm continuously making the choice to forgive, then eventually my emotions will match up to my choice. My Lord. So, so are you telling us that when we forgive, it's not for the other person; it's for ourselves? No, absolutely. Let me t- let me say it like this, Lakeith. I always say it, and I have to say it just like this for people to get it. You are stuck with what that person has done to you, but guess what? That person ain't studying you. They sleeping at night. Hey, man. <laughs> they sleeping at night, you know, when you, you go somewhere or you see someone, you, you know, in a particular setting, and now, you're, now you, you are emotionally discombobulated, and that person ain't studying you. They ain't thinking about you. So that's why you need to do it for your sake, because guess what? You may not never get the apology that you think you deserve. And if you don't never get that apology, are you going to choose to stay stuck? Or are you going to move forward from the offense? My God, my God. You know what? That is a big choice, right, Pastor? Yeah. It's so big. Um, Honestly, it's it seems so simple, but it's huge because mm-hmm. we've got to have that first step in order to even move forward in our purpose, huh? Yes. It's, and, and Lakeisha, I say it all the time. When I do book tours and stuff, the first thing, people don't even know it's about forgiveness. They they come to the table, they, they see the book cover, and they're like, what is this? And then as soon as I say forgiveness, it's a sound gesture like, oh. And then... The next thing, the response is, it's hard. And my response to them, it's hard, but it's possible. My God, I truly, truly um, resonate with that because um, it's, I love how you have a, uh, an eye catcher. You know, it's like, whoa, what, mm-hmm. what is that? And then it gives mm-hmm. you to kind of just really think about the purpose and um, the motive of the reason why you wrote it, you know, um, 
I love how um, your ministry is uh, really geared towards that because it, you pretty much um, prompt us to change our perspective yes. on the, our perceived failures because they're not really mm-hmm. failures, right? Mm-hmm. Tell us about that. Oh, well, there's an acronym for FAIL, which is First Attempt in Learning. Hmm. First Attempt in er- in Learning. This is not something that I got overnight, but what I will say is, is who better to talk about it than someone who had to forgive us, <laughs> <laughs> who had to experience forgiving people a whole lot of times. And I know what God gave me, it was, it was, it was him, God ordained, because this is not my first book. That's my third book. But this book has surpassed the first two. And again, there's, uh, different variables that come along with why this book has to pass the first two. I'm in a different place in life, just being obedient. And because of the message is for now, because this book was released in 2018. And after I released it, guess what? Then next thing you know, all I started hearing was about forgiveness. So it was just God confirming, look, I gave you this. I gave you the message, you know, and, I was just obedient with it. So when we talk about failures, first attempt in learning, right? And then when you have known the truth, see, the Bible says the truth shall make you free. The truth also has a way of making you see too. So the thing is really looking at the person in the mirror, right? We have to take an account. Look, Look at ourselves, really do self-reflection, really look within ourselves and look at the person in the mirror. Because a lot of times I tell people, sometimes in these offenses, we had a part to play in those offenses too. We're not all, our hands ain't always, always clean when it comes to these offenses. And so before we start pointing the thanks, the finger, Jesus said, he said, get that big old beam out of your eye. Then you can see clearly to get that little speck that's in your brother or sister eye, that thing that you thought was so big, really what you got going on is bigger than what they got going on. So, again, it's that inward work, looking looking at yourself and seeing, okay, with that particular situation, how you have handled things differently. Even though, let's just say for argument's sake, that person could have been wrong as two plus shoes, but instead of looking at them, look at you and see what you could have done better in the situation. My gosh. So pretty much what you're telling us is that it is not our job and not our responsibility to clear up someone else's thoughts, but it's ours to clear up our own perspective and our own mindset and, like you said, the forgiveness and healing, the, the allowing God to heal our own wounds and to keep our minds and our eyes off of other people. Is that what you're telling us? Absolutely, because we're not held accountable for what people do to us, but we are held accountable as a Christian to what we do to other people. As a Christian, we shouldn't be doing eye for eye and two for twos. And one of the definitions I give for forgiveness is extending grace to others. And this is the simple question that I ask people. If you were the offender... Would you want someone to forgive you? Mm, And nine times out of ten, that response is yes. Oh, my gosh. And that is so real. When you get down to it, when you get down to the root of what your goal Mm -hmm. is, you you don't really want to hold any type of hurt and any type of um, that bondage to you because it's keeping you from your destiny. Um, isn't that amazing? I love how you uh, showed us that because I feel like our eyes are open right now because we're able to really just see what God sees because um, that's just like you said, the bags, carrying the bag, mm-hmm. like the bag lady, right? <laughs> carrying the bag. Mm-hmm. And when somebody else is, you know, uh, thoughts, it's like, oh, God, look at this, look at this, look at this. And God's like, no, you're carrying bags that I did not um, um, equip you to carry. That, that's, that's not right. for you. 
right? That's right. right? Mm-hmm. Oh my God, everyone, listen. If, if you have, if you're just now tuning in to Lakeisha Mosley show, you have. Um, so much wisdom before you right now. We have Pastor Alicia Pitts here with us, and she's an amazing author, speaker, a police captain, and the founder of Pauline Ministries. And she has truly, truly given us so much knowledge about flowing forward, evolve, allowing God in your season right now to flow yes. in your season, flow in your yes. heart. Oh my gosh. Yeah, uh, I'm really, I'm really feeling you right now, Pastor, and um, just the book that you have as far as "Let It Go for Your Sake," forgive. Listen, mm-hmm. I need this book for myself. Listen, because it don't, it don't matter what <laughs> it don't. No, seriously, Pastor, it don't matter how big you get or um, where mm-hmm. you are in your life of success. It's something mm-hmm. in your life that you probably are holding on to because these, these, this book is causing you to remember. Right? Yes. Just how absolutely. good God is, right? Yes, absolutely. Because, and this is what I tell people, you can't do blanket forgiveness. Forgiveness is a process. Because if you if you do blanket forgiveness, what happens is, like I stated earlier, you'll go through the book and then you'll be like, wait a minute, I thought I let that go, but I actually, I did it. Because you did a blanket forgiveness instead of really being specific in regards to what the offense was, who the offenders were. So it is a process. So this is not something like you just blanket, like you you just wipe the slate clean. It's a process that you have to go through. So when different things come up, you won't keep getting those triggers. Oh, my gosh. And it's so real. I feel like you just gave us so much wisdom and knowledge Pastor, um, just on God, your, be the glory. Uh, experience. Oh, yeah, your experience, just your book, um, just your lifestyle. Um, we all can uh, really gravitate to it and really just get so much wisdom and keys out of it because God is truly moving. You know, it's so funny. I always tell people God is not slowing down. He's not stopping, so you got to catch up. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <What's> Absolutely. <doing? laughs> yes, because, because a lot of times what happens is, we get we are creatures of habit, and that's what happened with the children of Israel. They got so accustomed to being in Egypt that when they finally got free, they still had the, the slavery mindset. And I remember Ty Tribbett, he was preaching a message, and he said, it is something wrong with Christians being comfortable in a place that God is not. And so what happens is even in our churches, which in our local churches, God will move one way a particular Sunday, the following Sunday, people, we we are expecting God to move the same way. And God said, I'm not even in that anymore. I done moved on. And, and my mind go to, uh, I believe it's ludicrous when he said, when I move, you move just like that. So if we are really under the shadow of God's wing, to, to be under someone's shadow, you got to be really close to them to stay in the shadow. And so this is why in this day and time, we have to be so sensitive to God's leading because there's there's no reason why we cannot excel in God and we can't and we can't propel forward if we just be sensitive to his leading and just be obedient. Sometimes you might have to turn down all the outside noise so you can really hear him speaking because the truth of the matter is his voice should be louder than anything else talking around you. And he's given us that promise. And the thing is, he's given us the promise, right? If we acknowledge him in everything that we do, he will. the promise is he will direct our path. There's no way we as Christians shouldn't, like, we don't, we don't know what we're supposed to be doing. He said, my sheep know my voice. And a stranger, they, they won't follow. So either you know God's voice or you don't. And then if you don't know what to do, then the the other thing is you stand still until his will is clear to you. And and and, and let me put this disclaimer out there. I didn't get here overnight. But what I will say, it took me too long to get here, and I dare not forfeit what God is doing now because now the manifestations of his promises are unfolding. I would be a fool to forfeit it, forfeit it for anything. So now I'm just laser focused on doing whatever God would have me to do. I got I can relate to that, Pastor. Listen, it doesn't matter, you know, how fast you going, 
but I mm-hmm. may be going slow, but I'm going to get there at my speed, mm-hmm. you know, and I'm going to make sure uh, that uh, I get the clarity and I get the yes. wisdom that God has for me right now. Right, Pastor? Oh, my God. Yes. Goodness. Yes. Absolutely. And and that's why I said this is why you really, really have to embrace your uniqueness and embrace what God is doing. And I share this all the time. I'm a fourth generation preacher. And I remember when I first started preaching, I thought I had to do the hoop. I thought I had to do the holler. And then every time I would get up to minister, God would use me totally different. And then I remember there was times when I would minister, people would say, oh, you really taught that word. And I used to get offended because I wanted them to say, you preached. But God, when God began to deal with me and all of so this kind of really ties into self-acceptance. When I really began to be okay with how God chose to use me, it's how I became even more, more effective. And that's why I keep going back to saying that it's, it's nothing wrong with admiring people, but you really have to embrace what God is doing in you and in whatever capacity he wants to use you in. So you may not be on a major platform. Like I said before, the message I preached about being hidden but not abandoned, one of the things God told me, he said, sometimes I hide you because I'm creating a platform for you specifically to do my bidding on. So we can't be looking at other people doing this, that, and the third, or we see people operating in different things, and because they're operating operating in it so well, we think we can do it too. But guess what? If God hasn't called you to do it, you're not even going to get the same results because that's not what God's called you to do. God, that, that's not what God's called you to do. See, there's calling, there's, and then there's purpose, and then there's giftings. Just because you have a gift to do it doesn't mean that God called you to it. Now, with me, I, God has given me many gifts, but what I realize is the gifts that he's given me, it it assists me on the journey that I'm on. When I pastored a church for six years, I didn't have to worry about a praise and worship leader. I didn't have to worry about a musician because God had given me the gifts already. So if I had a praise and worship leader and they they wanted to act stank, excuse my vernacular, they wanted to act stank, I didn't have to depend on them because I could sing myself. If I needed a musician and for whatever reason – they got a, a, the wrong attitude, guess what? God equipped me so well that I didn't have to depend on a musician or a drummer. And and even in my own life, what ha- happens a lot of times, sometimes I may not walk through the door preaching. They may ask me to come sing. They may ask me to come come play for their conference. Or they may ask me to do both. And what ends up happening, like the scripture says, what? Your gifts will make room for you and bring you before great men. So what happens is, they get so blessed by the praise and worship or the music ministry, and then they come and say, look, I, I want you to come and, and preach. So God has, has a way of the different gifts and different things that he puts inside you to aid you on the journey and on the path that he would have you to take. My gosh. Listen, I am just so, I am so overwhelmed. Um, oh, you got me stirred up. <laughs> Listen, no, I am totally, here. you are amazing. Pastor, truly, truly, we're so blessed to have you on the Lakeisha Mosley show. Um, just uh-huh. overwhelmed with joy and um, just, just thankful for God's um, gifts that He has within you. Um, definitely, we got to bring you back on the Lakeisha Mosley show, definitely, because you have so many gifts and talents and um, projects that are moving forward. Um, what I want you to do is to let us know um, just about your um, events coming up soon, and you have mastery, a uh, business mastery. Summit. You have the ladies' night um, out. Yeah, so awesome! Oh my gosh! Let us know how we can stay connected with you on that, and definitely how we can connect with you on your book because we definitely have to purchase that like very, very soon. Yes. Well, pretty much everything you can get connected to me on my website, which is aliciapitts dot com. That's A L E E C H E A P as in Paul, I double T as in Tom, S as in Sam dot com. If you go to the website, there is a free giveaway. There is a ebook that I've written on how to learn how to apologize. So you can 
pick that up. It doesn't require anything but your name and an email address, and you'll get that ebook for free. I am on uh, Facebook. I am on Instagram, and I am on Twitter. There is also a group that I created on the book um, on Facebook, which is called Let It Go For Your sake, forgive. You type that in there. You can get connected to the group. It's all about um, different uh, forgiveness and different things are on there as well. Um, just, just to touch, um, this Wednesday, I will be on Conversation with Stevie. That is at 12 o'clock, um, an interview there. Friday at 7 o'clock, I believe, I will be preaching at Jesus Recycles Ministries in Franklinville, New Jersey. Um, I have a writer's workshop that's coming up the end of this month, March 28th. If you want to learn how to get started in writing a book, then you need to come out. It is a free workshop. It will be from 1 to 3. That is March 28th, uh, 1 to 3. That will be in Blackwood, New Jersey. So if you go on my profile page, you stay connected. Um, All the information is on the flyers. Um, I'm excited about April 3rd. April 3rd, I have a ladies' night out, and um, that is through the Gateway Corporation. So I'm excited about that. I'll be um, doing a talk on the dangers of unforgiveness. It is a ladies' night out. Um, It's about 26 people. Women have already registered for the event. You have to register in order to attend. But um, I'm excited about what the Lord is doing. Please please keep me in prayer and uh, pray my strength in the Lord as well as as I do what God has called me to do in in this season. Oh, wow. Praise God. We definitely going to keep you in prayer and um, God's hands to continue on you and show you so much of his um, favor. And um, this anointing is just pressed on you. I'm just, I'm just seeing you right now. We're going to stay definitely connected with you, Pastor, because you're Amen. Just, uh, totally abundant. You really are. You're moving in Amen. God. And everything Amen. that you are. Listen, your positive power family is right here. We're definitely going to stay connected with you. We're definitely going to support yes. you all of your endeavors. Um, and we're definitely going to come down there in, um, in New Jersey and see you. And um, Yes, please and do. Please do. Yes, Welcome please do. Door. And um, I just thank you guys. Thank you. I thank you. I thank Jerry um, for you guys just giving me this, this opportunity and, and this, this um, space to share, share, share the message and just be with you. It's been a blessing. Oh, wow. I'm just thank God for you. Definitely we look forward to seeing you very soon. Thank you. Yes, uh, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> you say it. All Amen. right, we're going to go into our last segment of the show, which is Lakeisha's Love Letter of Healing, Encouragement, and Empowerment. And we're going to go ahead and focus on uh, Psalms 32, verses 8. In this part. And it says, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you and my loving eye on you. Listen, God's all always watching you. He's always there for you. He's always encouraging you. And he's always leaving you with tools to succeed. He are never in this by yourself and you're never moving by yourself because God's always going to ensure that you have everything you need for your next step. All he asks is for you to be open and willing, open and willing, and to let go of everything that is not of him. He loves you so much, and he wants to do uh, so much in your life. And I believe that you got um, so many nuggets to, from tonight's show. I know I did. Um, God is just really wants you to definitely take a good look at any areas of your life that you have not given to him. That he wants you to make sure you give it to him so he can loom in your life and bless you endlessly. endlessly. Listen, I love you so much. This is the Lakeisha Mobley Show. And remember, in everything that you do, lead with confidence, understand, and love always. Next up is my brother, our producer, Jerry Worth Live, and we're going to listen to an amazing apology, and they have another special guest they're going to introduce you to. Love you so much. Have a good night. To Jerry Works Live Worldwide Podcast.
You are listening to Jerry Royce Live Worldwide Podcast. It's your boy David Ben. Hey, yo, Shay. It's time to go beyond the fish. Life is so good. It's so good. <laughs> yeah. A merry heart doeth good like a medicine, but, but a broken spirit drives the bones, you know. Yeah. It's about 8 in the morning, I'm just waking up Got the Folgers on brew, about to fill my cup While I'm looking out the window, let the sun come up I'm good I'm good I'm to get my day started Off to work, about to make them dollars If only you knew what I've been through You would smile and say that I'm good Got a good job, I'm good my bills are paid, I'm good, and my family's good, my health is good, I thank God that I'm good, I got a good job, I'm good, and my bills are paid, I'm good, I got food on the table, I know that he's able, thank God I'm good, I thank God I'm This hate, but we're ignorant grace. So intimate place, your heart of innocence make a life different and break. The soul sin in the sinning, could the enemy hate you? Are the sun, stars, and the moon? You are the beam of light when it's dark in the room. When I depart from the womb, you're the air that I breathe. I wait there when I need you, preparing for peace. You're so good. I got a good job, I'm good. And my bills are paid, I'm good. And my family's good, my health is good. I thank God that I'm good. I got a good job, I'm good. And my bills are paid, I'm good. I got food on the table, I know that he's able. Thank God I'm good. I got a good job, I'm good. And my bills are paid, I'm good. And my family's good, my health is good. I thank God that I'm so good. So good. 